Energy gives power. Telecommunications gives connection. Banking gives stability. Big data gives knowledge. Smart city gives new possibilities. Healthcare gives strength. Insurance gives safety. Administration gives support. Defense gives security. IT gives freedom. ASECO. Technology for business. Solutions for people. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are coming back uh, and we are continuing with the program for today, uh, the second day of Data Science Conference, Croatia 2021, which is, uh, uh, which is organized for the second year in a row. Uh, the next uh, thing on our uh, schedule is a panel, a very interesting panel discussion, uh, which is titled uh, Impact of AI on Businesses, a real project example. Uh, today with us, we are going to uh, have Darko Marjanovic, who is CEO of uh, Think Solar, member of ASECO uh, SE, and Robert Mihalic, who, uh, Mihalic, who is sales manager, international markets ASECO Southeastern Europe. Uh, in this panel, we are going to take uh, you on a journey where we are going to show you how AI can impact and boost uh, revenue streams, optimize processes, and generate end to end solutions for lead generation in e commerce, finance, and banking, and retail industry. Uh, I would like to invite Darko and Robert to join uh, me in this, and uh, I just would like for the first time to say hello to both hi, of you. Hi. Hello, hello. Okay, uh, it's very nice to see you. Uh, as an introduction, I would just like to give a short uh, explain. Uh, last May, our long-term uh, conference partner, uh, well, to be completely accurate, uh, a partner from the day one, I can say, because uh, guys from Think Solar, Milos and Darko, help us a lot in the beginning. Uh, became part of a SECO Southeastern uh, Europe group. Uh, what is interesting is that also uh, ASECO Southeastern uh, uh, Europe uh, was a part of very, very own first data science conference in Belgrade in 2015. Uh, one coincidence that happened is that uh, both of them had two uh, talks on the first conference. I remember that. So basically, this this, this is very cool to see when something like this happened after, I don't know, six or seven years, years from the start to beginning. So uh, for the start, I would like Darko to uh, ask you, one of the things that you have been working on uh, in the previous year was your very own AI product, which is called the Solver AI Suite, if I remember correctly. Uh, can you give us a brief overview of what uh, a Solver AI Suite is and uh, why did you choose and made a strategic decision uh, to create your own AI product instead of only providing a service to clients like most of the companies really do? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks, uh, Alexander, for inviting me on a conference. Uh, happy to be uh, here today. Um, we regarding the solver AI suite uh, it's a suite of the different uh, products uh, that uh, there is aimed to help the companies in the different situations and we are mostly focusing on uh, user analytics actually customer analytics uh, product analytics uh, anomaly detection so we can work on the fraud detection and the similar cases and also campaigning this is the uh, let's say the broadly what the uh, solar AI suite uh, offering and at the moment we are mostly focusing on the personalization use cases uh, through our solution so in these days uh, we are all in personalization and the segmentation so this is very briefly about the uh, solar AI suite and it's it's used in the different industries just to mention uh, e-commerce retail uh, banking uh, telecommunications uh, even we have the cases uh, in uh, uh, healthcare, actually, a pharmace pharmaceutical industry. So very broad, uh, very broad factor of industries. And uh, your second question, why we decided to build our own product uh, from the beginning, from day one of the things so where we want to, to have our product. We didn't know what is that. Uh, so we started as a, a solution company, service company. And through our journey uh, of now almost uh, six years, seven years, uh, we realize what we want to do, where we want to focus, and uh, it's always better for the company, for the startup, to have the product, to have the recurring revenue, to 
uh, to focus on something, to build something own and not to dump from the project to the project. So it gives stability and it's uh, actually very cool to, to build uh, your own product. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for this. And this is very interesting, like, because, like I said, uh, when we started the conference, I think that that, that was the, basically, we started the same year. We started your, your, uh, our conference and your company. So <laughs> that's also, like I said, from the day one, basically, we are connected. Uh, but what, what I want to ask Robert is that uh, um, there is a lot of companies that are basically, uh, let's say, uh, promoting themselves a boutique uh, service in data science, analytics, and AI. So basically, what is your stand on boutique customer service in data science in this uh, these uh, fields versus offering a complete solution to the customer. Uh, do you think is it possible maybe to offer both in the same at the same time? Well, yeah. I mean, a bit of history here. Yeah, from a Seco point of view, we are we we know about things for a long time. Now we are, let's say, together in this story, and we we see a lot of potential together. Uh, data science projects, as the guys probably watching this know very well, are not one size fits all, and, and we are quite aware of this. And and this is why the boutique approach definitely makes sense. Uh, with us as a, as a partner, I mean, I don't know how much you know about Aseco. We are quite a let's say strategic partner in the financial industry, so we cover different areas. But even with this approach, with Think Solver and us together, we go use case by use case and there is no replacement of the whole data science team in any enterprise or one pro platform that will solve all of your data science needs right so it's it's an iterative project and process and we believe that the boutique approach is the way to go however uh, we see a lot of potential since we can cover a lot of different areas in the payments industry in the banking and uh, in the telco so and the retailers as well so i believe there is a mix of, of both approaches uh, if we don't have the capability to take the whole world by by a single project definitely the boutique step by step start small uh, and dream big is is the way we would like to go okay thank you robert for uh, for your insight and basically like like you said i totally agree on that that uh, that uh, that you we cannot uh, just say that uh, one solution works for all basically that that's totally uh, going against like uh, personalization maybe it's customization but it's not personalization like a predator guy I suppose Predrag talked uh, talk yesterday and explained very briefly what is the difference. I think that most of the people, even in tech industry, don't understand the concept. Like also, they don't understand the concept between sales organization and anonymization. There's totally different aspect. But uh, without uh, because this we, we start speaking a little bit. Let's say uh, we didn't go deep dive into the, uh, examples. I think that basically the people can understand the ex uh, through examples, the concrete examples, much more what we are talking about. So uh, basically, as we announced in this panel discussion. We are going to uh, take you to the journey to explain to you to the different uh, industry. And first of all is uh, finance and banking. And I would like Robert to ask you, yeah. because ASECO says is one of the global leaders in the field of providing computer software and IT services. Uh, what do you see as the biggest challenges uh, your clients are facing that could be and may be solved with analytics and AI solutions? Yeah. Well, I mean, there is a, if you if you ask a hundred people what what is data science and what are the machine learning projects in the financial, you will get one hundred ideas, right? So, and this is to be honest, uh, Seco sees a, a big potential in in a lot of data uh, driven projects. We, as a vendor for twenty years, we we touch a lot of this data. We didn't do much smart with it, you know. We, we didn't uh, use the tangible improvements you can do with a lot of data. And this is why ThinkSolver is, is, I would say, a very good partner for us. So to give you an idea, uh, every, every marketing person in a financial industry or an insurance industry, they have their uh, targets, they, they have their budgets to, to offer the best products to, to Alex and to Darko. But a lot of time they have a lot of data and they don't have a way to, to take uh, considerable insights from this data. And we believe that such approach is definitely the first priority. So with all the data that we have as a SECO and with our partners, which are, uh, of course, in a secure way uh, uh, and, uh, and the regulatory, of course, uh, driven way uh, handled, we can get a lot of business value as well. So not just as a technology company, because all of us here are technology companies, it's about the business value of such data. For example, and I mean, Darko can tell you a bit more, we can improve the, uh, the conversion rate of a marketing campaign if we can do a, a you know, direct uh, targeted uh, offer for a model that is not easy for a bank usually or for an insurance agency to build by themselves. So we can help them in this way. And again, we are not 
solving all their problems? Definitely not. We are a partner in this with their internal data science teams, their internal marketing team. So I think this is one of the first priorities. And the second one we see definitely is the customer engagement. So everybody can, can build a technology solution. But the winners in the, in the area are the ones that, you know, the customers like to use. <laughs> so, you know, the IT guys, such as we are usually, we are not the perfect uh, in the user experience, maybe. So this is where yeah. uh, I think there's a lot of room to improve. So if, if you can get the insights from machine learning, what parts of your applications are going to be used mostly? You know, give me a, a, only the three features that I'm using all the time. This is the way to go. So we can optimize this customer engagement. This is where we see two of the biggest potentials. And what I wanted to ask, maybe Darko has a sub question for this, is uh, basically this uh, kind of what Robert is talking. This is basically, we can say this is strategic partnership basically with the clients. It's not only like to do something for once. So basically, uh, how much time uh, the, in your example, in, you, in your uh, experience, uh, this kind of approach can take time to for uh, from the day one to... Uh, to start implementing something like because sometimes this is not uh, the the decision that can be, uh, can be made very easily in uh, in terms from the client side. So basically, just your approach maybe to give you overview to our uh, uh, listeners to understand the whole whole concept and whole timeline. Yeah, it's different, but we are always a partner to to our clients. So we are not a classical vendor, as uh, Robert already mentioned. We are helping them yeah. to to take something from our tools and uh, do something quicker. Uh, and usually we can start after three months uh, from the initial meetings up to six months and uh, we can get the first results uh, for additional, I don't know, three to six months, it, depending uh, of the intensity of the project, what are the use cases, but this is the, something uh, that we are trying to do very fast and to show some results very fast. And then you have uh, your partner that believes in the technology, not in uh, in things solver, but in AI, in machine learning, in data, because it's a relatively new field. Although we have the business okay. intelligence and everything, but it's a new. Uh, sometimes people are afraid that it will replace them. Sometimes they don't believe. So you yeah. need to do something very quickly to show the, the results and to, to show the benefits. So we are trying to be very quick in this. Uh, yeah, and this is very, right. this is very interesting. This is very interesting that you mentioned that quick win. So basically, maybe Robert, I would like just maybe you, if you can just explain why, uh, maybe go 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 because I know that you're doing a, a communication with a lot of clients, international okay. clients. Just maybe to explain to the people why these quick wins are important, how they can uh, they can boost basically the 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 whole concept and whole timeline much faster to start implementing because when you just so show this small victories, how much it really they are uh, important in the partnerships. Well, well, I mean, I think everything in, in every partnership, it's about trust, right? So, uh, you know, going for a data science project, it's not an easy thing to do in any organization today. It's still new, but still to some extent exotic. I mean, you have research saying Gartner, 15 to 20 percent of the data science projects actually get delivered. So, you know, it's, it's still a risky place to do. However, everybody, and I think that's why everybody's here on this in this webinar today, sees the potential. So. We believe that with our customers, we should go with small steps. We go really building this trust. So it's even a proof of concept in some of our customers because, okay, we do business with a lot of uh, regulatory, uh, let's say, and stable, uh, serious, you know, financial sectors or serious uh, IT systems. You cannot go and try out things just so easily. So we go step by step and we help them with their internal teams to show this value to their management because in the end, it's all about a business case. So. If we can improve the uh, the conversion rate, like we have examples of 12%, you know, ask any marketing person out there, it's a huge impact, you know. So uh, we we go in the smaller areas, we and we build on top of this. We 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 learn from this as well. To be honest, there is a lot of things to be improved, and usually we start on the one place in the project, and it end up, ends up in a lot of other places as well, where we do it together. And I think Darko, I mean, your question initially. Why we went for a platform? Why are we building a product? It's because you cannot have hundreds of, of custom built data science projects. You cannot scale up this way. So in this project that we are doing, we are offering our platform and then the customer is taking over. They are building their own data models. They are helping fine tune them. We don't want to be in all of these things. We want to, you know, we want to build both sides in the process. 
Yeah, basically what you just started, and, um, this, this is very interesting, this is a very good uh, intro for my next question for the Darko, uh, which can maybe explain a bit more about the, the platform and the solar AI suite uh, and, uh, that you have developed. Uh, basically, what I was reading and preparing for this, uh, this uh, panel, I saw, I saw that you're helping clients in the finance sector to prevent fraud lead the customer create new unique selling proposition or what they are calling in the bank sector USP models. I think that not many data scientists who are in that field understand what USP actually means. Uh, what I saw that your partner with one of the biggest banks in uh, here in Serbia, Bank Intesa, Adico Bank and OTP Bank as well. Uh, I would like to ask you maybe can you give us a concrete example how you help some of them, one or two examples, so people can understand uh, really not only say okay it was marketing campaign, but maybe to explain a little bit deeper how was uh, doing this project and how did that that help them in terms. Yeah. <clears throat> so if we are talking about uh, banks, uh, yeah, we are working with uh, really serious banks here in Serbia, and this list is growing. Uh, usually there are different use cases from the bank to bank, but uh, for example, if I can uh, say it uh, with, uh, I don't know, from the high level, the first thing what we're doing uh, in, every, uh, in every client is help them to understand their customers. So this is the first step. So we are helping them to consolidate all of their data in one place to uh, co connect all the dots about the customers in one place. This is the huge, very huge impact on their business because uh, they can have the information in one uh, tap and one uh, in one I don't know uh, form or whatever. So this is the first step, which uh, saves them a lot of money and saves them a lot of time, which brings us to the next thing. So you now understand your customer. You have the data. That's very cool. That's very nice. But you want to earn additional money from the market. You want to uh, have better customer experience for your customers. And that's something where we are putting our recommendation system, our segmentation models in action to help them to increase their conversion rates. So we are helping them to have more personalized campaigns. That's the one of the one of the uh, ma major cases. So how they can offer some product to the group of people, but not to send to everyone. So if you are interested for, I don't know, cash loan, you will get the cash loan, but not a business card because you are not interested in that. So this is not only impacting conversion rate, but also customer ex experience. And also it's also impacting on the churn because customers and clients are getting what they need. So someone is uh, taking care of them. So this is very, very good and I don't know I think 95% or even the number is higher for the new generation that actually wants to get personalized offers and uh, to have that treatment so this is something what how we are helping uh, our clients to do that and also yeah, to segment the customers better. Yeah, and basically what you said, I think that's very interesting because people don't understand that it's not about when you and they are thinking, okay, if we are using AI, there will be uh, less people working on in in, in let's say in, on uh, selling this to directly to the customer. But it's not that because you have more time to dedicate yourself to the smaller group of people, and uh, of course, uh, uh, aspect of ratio and return ratio will be much higher because you have more time to dedicate yourself and to get better results. And that sometimes people don't understand. It's not about only to target like. To, to call 1,000 people, maybe it's better to call 15 or 20 or 50 people yeah. and to have 45 good uh, good results. Basically, what I wanted to say, Robert, uh, did uh, because like I said, Aseko has a long history here. And uh, what Darko said, it was very interesting for me that that sometimes some something that uh, seems so trivial as having all of the customers in one place can be very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, can you maybe give us uh, some example that you're working on with, with, with because I know that you have Nest Pay and cetera some some products mm -hmm. that that uh, how 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 did you bridge this gap to understand that this was one of the problems uh, with the companies uh, with banks because oh, people, people I mean, sometimes don't talk about that. Everybody is aware of the challenges. Let's not call them problems. You know there is a lot of data out there. Of course, the the data that you need, transactional data, it's always there at the tip of your you know fingers, and of course everything else that you need for daily operations. But I think everybody sees there is a lot of other data that's a big potential that we are not harnessing right the insights from them. And this is where I think everybody, and this is why everybody is so interested, right? So so. 
it's not an easy thing. This is a, a from an infrastructure point of view, from a technology point of view, even from a you know business point of view of understanding such. It's it's a it's a long way to go. So uh, and it will not be solved by tomorrow by Think Solver or, or ASEC or anybody yes. else. That uh, there is so much work to be done in the in the times to come that we 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 believe tangible again small quick wins are already improving the whole uh, the whole ecosystem so if you will uh, be you know less uh, if you will do two clicks less on your e-banking tomorrow or mobile banking thanks to the thing solver uh, understanding that you know that this is that one something you don't need this is a huge impact as, as well so all you know a plastic example your netflix when they recommend you a movie right they they know what you like so this is also probably on their bottom line uh, ca causing a billion dollar savings per year so this is this is the number so we are aware and we for example like you mentioned nest pay is our payment gateway product servicing you know millions of transactions or tens of millions of transactions per month if we improve the checkout process by 10 seconds and if we make sure that the abandonment rate on the last click is five percent less there is a big business case there. So we don't need to do uh, revolutions in, in the space and nobody's expecting this, but small tangible improvements, like we mentioned, real projects. And this is wh why we like, you know, and this is a call to everybody that's listening. Let's talk about small proof of concepts to show what it makes sense and build on top of that. There's no need to go for a huge digital big data project because not easy to, you know, build a business case for it. And basically what you said, and uh, thank you for uh, correcting me, problems, challenges, because there, there is always talking about that. But uh, what I want, Darko, to ask you, uh, what was, because finance and banking is very regulated part, and there is a, a lot of things you can do and you cannot do, and maybe you can, but if you maybe can, that you cannot do. <laughs> basically, it's very, very, some, some gray area regarding that. But what was the biggest challenge uh, you fa maybe you're facing when implementing this kind of model or solution with the, the banking clients? Yeah. Okay. Regulation. That's the one you need to <laughs> take care of everything, but it's normal I'm, as a, a customer of the bank. I don't want to, to be that easy for someone to change something and to change it rapidly because uh, the, the bank is place where holding my money and my savings. So th th that's, that's, uh, that's needed to be, but this is one of the challenges. The, the second one, uh, we are, still young uh, you know in in this so we are teaching our partners our clients uh, what are the benefits of artificial intelligence there are a lot of clients that are understand that uh, they know where they want to be in the future but still it's 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 the beginning so that's one of the challenges and that's why we are uh, always open to educate the market and uh, educate our partners. You know, we are always supporting uh, conferences, uh, open meetups, uh, free presentations, etc. So this is one of the challenges, uh, not in the banking uh, sector, but in I think in the whole uh, whole industry in our region, and I would say in, in the Europe. It's not dramatically different. So it's not maybe maybe even maybe. Only the U.S. is the different for for month, two steps to be ahead of us, but this is still new. So I yeah, think it's the biggest challenge. Yeah, basically said that it can be it, be, it can be related to across the industries. So I totally agree on that, especially when you're saying U.S. But also what I have uh, experience with U.S. companies, they also like 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 a uh, proof of concept in the beginning. And after that, yeah. you can do much bigger projects. In, like I said, in Europe, still when you have a uh, proof of concept, there is still two or three unnecessary maybe uh, steps to start doing beside regular job some some of the big, uh, bigger transformational projects. But basically, yeah. this is very good. Uh, this is a very good, uh, let's say, intro for my uh, question for you, Robert. Uh, in your experience, what is the value that may be uh, saved uh, through optimization of the processes? Like we start using, uh, talking about 10 seconds, etc. And usage advanced analytics in the end banking sector, because you said 5%, etc. But maybe person, can, uh, maybe some some listeners, they are not in banking sector, they don't understand or, or how much value it is. So basically, what is your experience? What is the, the, the range of uh, the projects we are talking about uh, when uh, saying these two things? I mean, the, the financial impact is, 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 you know, very hard to calculate, uh, especially like uh, something that you can share uh, such openly. But uh, uh, really, the, the value is, again, in the user experience, definitely in the engagement of the customers. And these are things that you can calculate. It's not some, 
you know, well, I will have a better experience. You can really calculate this. So we can see this engagement. We see our customers, for example, using the mobile app now as a number one channel. You know, it's, it's taken over the web banking, branch banking, and every other. So if you don't, uh, if you don't improve this experience and make sure that it works flawlessly, uh, you're going to have a tough time competing with some, you know, maybe Revolut or other banks that are coming, like Neo Bank, in all of our markets. So this is something where we really see uh, the potential. And again, other than going with Think Solar to our existing customers and our partners internationally, this is something, for example, I'm doing personally with Darko. We see a lot of uh, value into uh, including more of the machine learning in our existing products. So there is a synergy there as well. I don't know if you know. For example, we are one of the bigger contact center providers for banks. So a niche, let's say, know-how of banking processes. If you improve the call center, you know, nobody likes to call the call center. You know, you know when you call your bank, you know, ah, oh, it's an IVR again or your, your insurance. So if we increase uh, uh, the information flow and the recommendations for this exact customer when he's calling, you know, this will be very much appreciated. And it's not only <laughs> in money, it's really about your brand and everything else. So. There is a lot of uh, areas where it can, we can improve such uh, experience and engagement of the customer. Second one, we are a security company as well. So uh, a lot of uh, security you're doing today when you're executing your e-banking, your mobile banking, it's very important, by the way. And you, you have to do it. I mean, nobody likes to do it, but you need to do it. There's a lot of cyber risks out there. So if we, increase, if we increase the understanding of the customer doing such a transaction, maybe you don't need to do the strong customer authentication, how it's called. Maybe you can do a more easy way of frictionless authentication. This is a big impact on your operations and also on the customer experience. They will do more transactions because it's easier. So again, use case based is, is the important way to go, not some uh, huge, huge calculations. And you know, we believe that we need to fix small things little by little and it will in the end be a big impact. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I totally agree on that. Especially, like I said, we didn't talk about security. We'll not go that. Maybe we'll go later on. But uh, uh, the thing is, that is very important. I think that people do understand why is that important because nobody would like to have uh, that situation that some money is not on their uh, bank account and it should be there. That's no very important. There. Yeah, of course. When, when there's no compromise, people do uh, do do understand that security is it's yeah. uh, sometimes more uh, valuable than privacy in that terms. Uh, but uh, to to carry on with the, the panel, I would like to uh, reflect a little bit more on uh, two different industries that they are, that are becoming uh, most uh, more and more uh, very close to each other in my terms in customer experience terms, and that's retail and e-commerce, especially after the pandemic, because there is a lot of things that retails are uh, offering through the through the e-commerce in the end, because there was like not possible, and I think that th this is some trend that will not be stopped. I think that it, after pandemic, it will be just, just accelerated. So basically, my first com uh, question for Darko is uh, one of your clients uh, are also big retail companies uh, in Serbia, such as Gomex, this Planeta Sport, and others. That's something like Consum in Croatia, for example, just to give an overview. Very, very large, comp uh, very large, uh, uh, very large company. Uh, what are the most common challenges that can be solved with uh, artificial intelligence, and how much impact this may have on their business and profitability? Yeah, yeah, the e-commerce uh, and retail, it's, they're booming and it's a very interesting industry to be with uh, AI solution because I read some reports that they, they will pass the bank investment uh, in the AI, they will pass the banks in the future. Currently, after the government, the banks uh, are investing the most in the AI, but uh, retailers will be even higher in the future. So what we're focused there is also more, more or less the same things as uh, financial, but um, maybe the results are uh, more visible and the uh, conversion rates are bigger because it's the different industry. You are not selling the cash loans every day uh, to the same person. So you can have them uh, very be let's say better results. And we're doing the same thing. So the personalization, so recommendation engines, uh, to help them to choose the products uh, for their customers, but also to choose customer for the products they want to sell in the certain moment uh, and to segment that customers and to help them how to focus. We had a project in helping the retailers to say, okay, don't focus to increase your 
I don't know, basket in the value, yeah. but uh, try to increase the frequency because you cannot do something. So we are helping them with, uh, in a strategic way how to, to, to do some, some things and where to focus and give them the tool how they can do it alone. So it's the tool, our tool, it's very simple. So they can create um, audiences and campaigns in five steps. So this is something very new for retailers, which are not uh, uh, heavily equipped uh, uh, for, uh, with tools as a banks at the moment. So this is a good uh, customer experience from our side for, for them, uh, showing them how that can be easy. And we have very good results that we even have a conversion rates for, like, for example, for Gomex last, uh, last week, uh, 30% uh, conversion rate and campaign without recommendation. So this is very, that's very good result. So I really like uh, in, in these days to, to when we have the projects in the retail slash e-commerce because it's uh, really booming and it's moving very fast. It's moving faster than banking because there is no regulation like in the banks. It's one thing. And basically we just uh, scratched with uh, this kind of tools and use cases, uh, the retailers and the e-commerce. So it's a green field, I would say. Yeah, and basically what you're just saying, basically, um, and uh, I think that uh, what is important part, especially for non-tech, that, that much non-tech persons, is uh, human in the loop. Basically, you're helping them to understand what is helping and, and still uh, giving them a space to uh, to make their own decision based on. So basically, I think this is very important, uh, important, uh, let's say, uh, way how to uh, some companies that didn't use that much or they don't have strong analytical background because I think analytical background is very important and, uh, because when you have strong analytical background, you understand data. When you understand data, you can think a bit more how companies who are doing that on much larger scale and much frequent more frequently can help you but like i said i'm very very uh fond that you mentioned human in the loop because i think th this is the, like the this will be the future when we are talking about using ai uh robert it's one of the important. things sorry yeah. just it's very yeah, important to give the tool and to help them to make decision and to be honest ai will never replace uh, any jobs it's will create even more <laughs> so we are trying to explain that and uh, so it's very important yeah, and we are going to have one panel in, uh, in uh, like I said, uh, uh, Tomislav and Anand uh, will talk about, and they, they will be one of the topics we're going to talk. This, this is like excellent, excellent, uh, let's say, message to everyone because people don't understand this top part, especially non-tech persons, to be honest. But Robert, I, I, what I wanted to ask you is uh, when I was doing research, uh, like I said, for this panel, I was preparing a lot. Um, I, of course, know about Nest Pay because we are also using Nest Pay. Everyone is using Nest Pay <laughs> for any Thank kind you. of e-commerce <laughs> for any kind of e-commerce solutions but yeah. uh can you explain us to us briefly maybe how do you use advanced analytics and ai to improve e-commerce solution for your clients because what i want to see that you're doing a lot in this field as, as a company so maybe if you can just give you give well, us a few examples alex cannot feel it yet because we are not there yet so we are of course like everybody in the space we are aware of it and of course we are a big organization as well so we are working on introducing such things so that you as a customer can feel it Definitely, as we mentioned, we can get a lot of insight uh, from what uh, our customers are using, what they're paying for. Again, it's not that we will know what Alex is doing, but we will have models of people like Alex and what to offer to them as the best thing. And maybe to improve, again, the experience, maybe to uh, improve the, the checkout process. I don't know. Maybe this is, this is actually enough. Uh, this is what, how we see it. So going uh, step by step we will also very soon uh, to our end customers improve this experience and we will be able to offer i would say better um, better fit products better fit uh, you know offers maybe for you it's more important to get a five percent discount than i don't know uh free i don't know delivery on the next round so this is again an interaction between us as a provider however with nest pay we are a platform provider for payment gateways there is also the merchants in this in this equation that need to get the value as well, and we are here to offer such uh, such services uh, to everybody. Okay, uh, Darko, what I want also to 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 stay in e-commerce basically before we move to to see what is the difference and uh, and uh, similarities is your solution also has been uh, provided to very effective with uh, e-commerce clients, and I know that when we were speaking before this that you said this is the niche that is very very uh, interesting to you, and you would like to try to get to much more people who are doing e-commerce and we're really going to use these materials to share with them so basically uh maybe if, if, if even if you uh repeat yourself i would like to 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 ask you 
for the sake of benefit, uh, can you walk us through one of your models for e-commerce and how it may impact e-commerce businesses? Yeah. Okay, I'm now coming from the meeting from one uh, e-com. So it's uh, uh, the most important thing now in the e-commerce uh, is to provide the personalization, but to have the measure in that. So to, to provide the best customer experience. So when you enter in some uh, e-com providers, so you are getting things that you really want to buy, you really like. But on the other hand, you must be careful when you're deploying these things not to close the customer in some bumble so they will see only something they already bought or uh, only some few things. So as I, for retailers, recommendation engine is something that uh, we are investing the most and that the e-commerce clients are the most uh, interested in. So we are providing them a full service so from collecting the data from their e-commerce, so they do not need to do some kind of integration because this can take some resources. We have the, all the models, uh, so we even implement a uh, model uh, based on the Amazon uh, scientific papers. So similar similar things we can mm -hmm. offer to 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 our uh, uh, clients and partners. So the recommendations are the biggest thing. So to help them to prevent some abundant cards uh, and to uh, improve experience on the checkout. As Robert already mentioned, we are now trying to integrate all of these things, our machine learning models, uh, payment gateway, so you the customers will have a very good experience from buying to the checkout. So it will be a pleasure for them to pay something. So this is where we are aiming. So that's the most common use cases for e-commerce and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. and on the other side, we are helping e-commerces to uh, detect, to understand. We are back getting back uh, to understand their customers, to detect their customer, to, de de to detect their journeys on the web and to provide uh, inputs for campaigns. So that campaigns can be personalized, not only when you're visiting, but also when you're getting the email or uh, I don't know, Viber message or SMS to be very personalized and not uh, pinging you, bomba bombarding you every every single day, but uh, with some measure and uh, very smart. That's the use cases that we are doing the most So, at, at the moment. Yeah, also, as somebody who has e-commerce solution, I think that the person also don't, uh, don't uh, it's not only from the customer side, like you said, it's from the uh, from the e-commerce side that sometimes it can be very painful and it can be very, not painful, painful, but it can be very time consuming and you're not sure that you're doing the right thing, but having, like you said, the mm -hmm. whole concept integrated for you, it's not only about your customer, it's about yourself to understand what is happening behind. I think that that value cannot, it, people don't understand how much this, uh, especially not e-commerce, uh, e-commerce, uh, side don't understand how much value is there because yeah. maybe you're doing something wrong and you can understand you can see that after two or three months when the campaign is over basically and say okay did the wrong thing having something like this can help you basically how do i see help you to maybe track it on not only weekly but uh, not weekly but the daily level if everything is going by the parameters with it you're setting up so basically yeah. i think that oh, that that is also very very important like i said yeah. th 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 there's both sides yeah, the real time for e-commerce is very, very important. So to have the data very fast. So that's something we are providing for for our uh, clients. So it's a little bit different than in the retailers. We have time to calculate, to prepare everything on the e-commerce. The challenge is to provide it very fast. This is something we are doing. And to to have the results very fast and to measure them every day. So you are not doing one campaign uh, that will take, I don't know, two or three weeks or a month, you're doing basically daily campaign, like mic mi micro campaigns. So we're calling micro moving campaigns. Uh, our colleagues uh, coined that name where you have the campaigns that are repeatable and you're changing and measuring every day, every hour. So every minute. So this is very important for e-commerce e uh, space. 
So basically, I can ask you when we are starting because uh, I've announced yesterday that we are going to start our own tag brand. Uh, we're going to launch in September. So basically, we can we can uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, say that we can calculate on your uh, your help in when we are establishing this as maybe one of the biggest in Europe tech gig uh, brands. So I will be <laughs> hunting you for sure regarding this because people don't understand how much this is important. Uh, what I wanted to maybe uh, because you already started to to, to say uh, between uh, similarities between. Uh, implementing retail e-commerce solution for clients, maybe from the ASECO side, which is which has a different kind of expertise. Maybe, Robert, can you just give us uh, maybe uh, briefly the uh, differences and similarities between these two industries, especially now after the pandemic uh, started uh, last year, unfortunately? Well, to be honest, both, uh, both of those industries really, especially in the pandemics, they reacted quickly, I would say, and you can see a rise uh, in the adoption of the services on e-commerce or also on the digital channels of a bank. So the channels that were once called alternative channels are today probably the number one channel. So we, we see this definitely uh, and it will continue. I don't uh, expect things will go back to how they were completely. So. Yeah. People are now used to doing uh, their banking online. People are used to buying more and more things online, especially in our region. In some parts of the world, it was more adopted than before. So we see a lot of potential there. There is a difference in pace. Uh, the regulatory framework, like Darko said, definitely is more strict than it should be on the financial sector because it brings the stability and the robustness of such, of such a sector. On the e-commerce, of course, we see tremendous growth. Uh, as mentioned, our payment gateway is growing, I would say, 20% on a normal year and even more on a, on a, on a COVID year. So uh, this, this, see, this is showing no signs of stopping. And for everybody listening, of course, this is important because the competition is increasing as well. So we expect everybody needs to provide because you cannot fight on price, right? Everybody is offering a payment gateway. You need to fight on the user experience and, of course, the flexibility of the systems you're offering. So we hope and we, we see that we are still quite successful in this. And with the more uh, with a strategic decision of us as a SECO to be more active in the machine learning and, and the AI and big data space, we expect we will be able to, to be, be still the, the trusted partner like we were until now. Okay, uh, thank you for that. Uh, with this, I would like to go to the, let's say, final conclusion and remarks, a little bit something for the future, let's say, to maybe hear something, something we didn't hear before. Um, uh, so basically, Robert's question for you is, uh, what do you think will be the next big uh, game changer in the ASECO uh, niche? Uh, and what we may expect from ASECO in the future in the field of AI solutions? I mean, we... We started, I mean, things over and us are now together for a couple of months. We are strategically investing more and more in two, I would say, areas. One is, of course, organic growth of the know-how in, in AI and making our solutions even more adopting the technology. And the second is the merge and acquisition kind of processes. We are looking to partner with different companies, to acquire them, to, you know, uh, add additional um, products to our portfolio, additional know-how as well to our to our portfolio. Yes, as a SECO, we are mostly focusing on the finance industry, maybe some public and telco, but in in the AI space, I think we will go wider as well. So uh, there is no there is no big boundaries to be honest. Uh, looking at Darko and his experience, if you can, he can talk for five days on on totally different kinds of use cases of AI. So we we will not be constrained in this way. But you, I think strategically, and the big thing that we see in front of us is building our capabilities in this. And we are looking for partners. Uh, your initial question was, are we looking for partners which are service-based partners, you know, uh, where you can go in and, and help somebody with a service or really with an IP, uh, with, with, uh, with products and solutions that can scale up more and even provide uh, continuous, uh, let's say, uh, technology to our customers, we would go for the latter. So we are looking for partners which have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, IP and products and solutions in place as well, not only the, let's say, know-how. Okay, uh, Darko, I would like to uh, uh, ask you, I think that maybe we already maybe answered the question before, uh, but you were not, uh, you're not uh, didn't realize about that. But if you'd like to pick, if you need to pick one industry, you would like to see things solar uh, beside what we talked about before, may try to develop their AI solution, which one would be and why? Yeah. Yeah, um, this is an interesting question. I assume something that we didn't 
tackle too much and uh, I think there is a bright future is uh, probably the healthcare. This is something we uh, still do not have experience. It's a mm. still new thing and with all this pandemic and probably this will repeat in some some moment. Uh, this is the industry. This is uh, uh, way behind the others. So I would like to have the project there. We will see. Currently, we are very focused on the on our roadmap on uh, finance and retail slash e-commerce, but maybe in the future some healthcare will be very interesting interesting for us. But who knows? We'll see. Yeah, that's very interesting because, like I said, we, we are also starting in US one of the uh, uh, conference we are going to organize going to be health tech basically the totally to do that industry. So I can understand. I already heard you said the healthcare delivery that is very very interesting. And regarding like the numbers, the 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 numbers are skyrocketing and it's uh, surreal how much money is investing right now and how much will be invested in the next five years. So basically, uh, this may be the call for people who think about it, And uh, but it will be very interesting uh, to see what's happening in the next few years in this sector. Uh, for the last thing, I would like uh, personally to thank you both for this amazing panel. I think that we have shared a lot of uh, cool uh, and interesting uh, things that can be very helpful to the persons and people who are thinking about or already implementing some of the solutions. So for sure, we're going to use this in marketing materials and to uh, popularize some of the topics, which is very important for us as well as a conference and the community. Mm -hmm. uh, for the end, I would like to give you a floor to maybe uh, say what is your final message for the people and maybe to with that to conclude this panel. So without, let's say, without any any uh, any uh, any order, maybe Darko, you can start and Robert, you maybe can after Darko say what do you, what is your message for our audience in the end of this panel? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe we mentioned too many times, but uh, I think uh, start small, dream big, uh, try, do not uh, fail to, to try use cases. It's it's okay to fail on someone, but not dream too big, uh, too big projects. Uh, just start it. You will see the benefits in, if you're talking about AI. We talk about this uh, a lot, so I think this is the key thing. Uh, to remember from maybe this panel and for the future so okay. start small start small i totally agree thank you dark for that robert maybe you can add something or if you want you can also repeat because this was all about <laughs> of this no, I'll, not repeat. I'll just say thank you for the opportunity really alex to to discuss this i mean i'm sitting here in zagreb croatia and i'm happy that we have a, a croatia paid kind of a conference i hope to see everybody on the regional one as well on, in september i believe right and uh, we are also in November. Sorry, we are also really we believe in this story, to be honest. And we believe in partnerships in this story. We are not a competitor to every customer there. We are not a competitor to every data science team internally in these companies. No. And we are, for example, part of the Crow AI ecosystem as well. We really think there is so much room to grow and to discuss different use cases that you know there is room for everybody. And even if it's a crazy use case kind of an idea we like to check, you know, we are here to, you know, contact us, contact Darko, contact you if you want as well. And let's talk about it. So we will find definitely use cases there that will improve, I think, the whole ecosystem. And this this will this will not be a one size fit or one solution fits all. No, we will go step by step. Thank you. Okay, Dark, uh, thank you, Darko. Thank you, Robert, for this, uh, like I said, amazing panel. It is very nice to have you both here. And like I said, there was like a lot of useful uh, useful information shared here. Uh, we are having us a short break after this uh, after uh, this uh, this panel. We are continuing in uh, 4:15 uh, with the next uh, panel that is going to be delivered by. Uh, and our panelists will be uh, Gino Simic from Infobip and Goiko Galanov from Finu Price. Uh, basically, we're going to talk about AI for good, uh, how technology may benefit mankind. It will be very interesting talk uh, and panel as it was uh, this one. And uh, like I said, see you in uh, 12 minutes back in the program. Bye, everyone. Thank you once Thank again. You. Bye. Bye. Bye.